to your... I actually don't. I'm, I'm looking forward to knowing everybody before they all get out of here, so... Good. Yeah, and I would encourage you to do that and make sure you get to visit yes. whatever, with everybody. I love uh, to. Yeah, and so um, I want to just open the floor up to Larry to let him talk about the shows that are coming up, the shows that maybe you, you're hoping to do, and kind of give us your COVID plan, because I think that's going to okay. be something we're going to want to talk about. To give you a little background, um, I've been in this business for, my company's 50 years old this year, and I'm still trying to make it rich quick. Of course, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I've made a commitment to myself primarily to uh, come down here in Eureka Springs because it's always been a favorite place of mine to visit, to, to de-stress, to get away from things. But I fell in love with this town a long time ago. And with this beautiful auditorium here, to me at the time, wasn't being used enough. I decided to take a look at it. And uh, in the last two years, two years and a half, I've... I've brought in mostly sell-out shows in here, and by doing so, I've been uh, I've been laying a lot of money out to the artists, trying to get the higher-level artists in here, to get to, to, to get people in here to see uh, the talent they would not normally see that caliber in this small town. So that's that's what I've been dedicated to doing, and it's really working. And of course, the COVID situation has shut me down for a year and a half years. It has it's affected everybody in this building. But we're going to get through that. And my commitment to all of you in this town, I'm in this. I'm, I'm committed. And uh, I, think I, I, think, I'm, I think I can make this better and better as time goes by. It's my intent to bring larger acts in here consistently. Now, what that equates to, I have to, I'm the guy that has to pay them that evening. They're working for me that day. I pay the rent on this building. I pay the stagehands, the catering, the security, rent. That's, that's the risk that I'm in any time I come in here. So uh, I have to know a lot about the demographics we're selling tickets to, and I know pretty well what we're trying to, uh, to focus on. It's been working. Uh, it's been working from uh, Okra Medicine Show, Lyle Lovett, Steve Earle, Pure, uh, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. We've done well here. And uh, what that's done is to give me a confidence level that I can do better. Um, so my intent, and I'm repeating myself, I want to get the most prominent shows in here that have a broad appeal. And when I come in with the show, it's my intent to sell every seat. I have to, and of course, if, if I pay an artist a handsome uh, guarantee, it will have to equate to ticket sale prices. There's no, way other, no other way than I, can, than I can do it. So a seat here that might sell in the back row of a big arena for $85, I might be having to sell them here for 125 just to cash flow the thing. So that kind of gives you an idea how ticket prices are formed. It's nothing about greed whatsoever. It's just cash flowing the event. Uh, I have full confidence with the help of you guys and the great staff. I can't say enough good about the, uh, the people that have helped me in here, Rick and the team and, and Ron. have made it real easy. and. Uh, pretty uh, stress-free to come down here and do shows. So that's how I kind of got my foot in the water and I'm here to stay as long as I can. But I can commit to you, I will make it bigger and better than it's ever been. And if I can bring a thousand people in here at my shows and get them to stay two or three days, dump them out on the street when the show's over and they spend money in town, I think that's gonna meet an objective that you guys would wanna see me come up with. So as I stand here, I'm committed. I'm committed totally. So I would welcome any question anyone has, but I'd first like to address, before, before we do that, there's a sensitivity, of course, how we handle the COVID situation in a theater. And Jeff and I talked this morning uh, with Butch and uh, the venue uh, staff here about devising a way to make it as safe and comfortable as we can to get crowds in here. Uh, well, last thing I want to do is be responsible 
for getting someone ill in this building. I, said, I don't want that. Uh, no one else does in this town. So the plan is right now, and it can, and it can improve. Right now, it's in a work, a work in progress. We're going to set up a tent, a fold-out tent, outside the building. I'm going to get professional staff to take temperatures before anybody comes in this building. Now, that's the most immediate way for us to spot someone who may have been affected by COVID. Uh, I, I had my dose of COVID myself, so I kind of know what it's about. And uh, I don't want to see anybody have to go through that. With the temperature checks, we're also going to put signage up on both the entry doors on each side of the concourse that ask people to be considerate of the people in this building and to wear their masks voluntarily. Uh, I don't think we're at a point yet where we force people to wear masks. I don't think we're at a point yet that we have to see proof of vaccination. But I'm all ears. But in the device that I want to use is the temperature checks and what equipment it will take to do that properly. Jeff and I talked about a little bit, and we'll, we'll, we'll refine that and define it a little bit later. Um, we can make this work. We can do shows here safely. Do I want the COVID thing to leave? Oh, man. Uh, it's been a year and a half since I've done a show. So it's made tough times for all of us. But I will do it correctly with the help of all of you and with Butch. Uh, we can figure this out. So with that said, does anybody want to ask me anything? Yes. I've heard so much about you, so welcome. I've, I've heard wonderful things. I'm glad you're back, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yes? Uh, <clears throat> are you going to provide the, the folks out there to do the temperature checks? Or? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, the thought is right now with Rick's idea, is maybe go to the, the fire department, get some of those. They have to be professionals. They, it can't be someone casual. They, I need somebody of authority or status, you know, off-duty nurse. And it would be a good idea, I believe, to have a good uniform security there to try to explain things. Uh, inevitably, there's going to be someone in the crowd who doesn't think they got to take their, get their temperature taken. But we're going to have to require them to take it to get in this building, whether they like it or not. If someone has a legitimate reason that they can't pass the test, pass the temperature check, well, I'll give them their money back. They go home. So I want to keep goodwill going as much as we can. And in, with the intensity and the excitement of a concert, there's a little more, people are a little more excited than a normal crowd. They get to see, you know, they get to see their, they get to see their star perform on stage. So it's a little bit of a different audience, some different animal. Yes. Hi, Larry. I'm Bobby Foster. Hey, Bobby. Um, I have a place in Kansas City, and just last week I was there, and I follow several of the convention centers and the Kaufman uh, Center, Midland Theater there. And right as I was coming home, I started getting emails and Instagram alerts that the way they're handling it, and I'm not saying we should, I'm just saying what, what I've been hearing up there, is that they are going to require either a vaccination card or a negative test within 72 hours, and that you have to provide one or, one or the other of those if you're, if you're going to go to anything in Kansas City at some of the bigger venues like Midland, Kaufman Center. So I'm just throwing that well, out there for, from what I saw. Some, I'm from Tulsa. Some of the major events in Tulsa are requiring exactly that. Proof of vaccination that shows the date at least two weeks prior to the day of the show. So there's time for the vaccination to take effect. Uh, we can talk more about that. It's just whether it's just whether we can keep the goodwill. We're going to have to be stern. 
We're going we're gonna to make some people mad out there, and some people are going to drive away unhappy. I don't see how we can keep from doing that. The most efficient way always, though, is temper check, temperature check on site. That's the most efficient. Um, the other problem we might have, we will have, if we have to take the time to look at proof of vaccination and temperature check, it will mean we have to open the doors at least an hour and a half earlier than we've advertised. Because everybody comes at once, as you guys know. There's a line out there on the sidewalk, and it's long every time we open the doors for one of my shows. And it takes time just to get them off the sidewalks the way it is. So whoever has good ideas, I want to hear them. Yes? I am James DeVito. I have a restaurant, so I feel your pain um, as far as COVID goes. Uh, anticipating our folk festival, I'm going to try and see if the rest of the commission will agree that we put conditions upon purchase of tickets that masks be required. If you purchase a ticket that you'll have to wear a mask, you're in the unfortunate situation that tickets are already out there without any preconditions on them. So. Yeah, we would have to, we would have to get on the websites and standardize our advanced ticket sales sooner than, than, than later. Right. We, we got to make we got to make people aware of what it is we're, we're going to require them before they get here. I know the uh, I love New York concert. They required proof of vaccination and a COVID test both before entry. Okay. I'm not saying go to that, but I'd like to see our commission require masks upon purchase of tickets. Like I said, I'm open to any good ideas. Uh, I'm open to any good ideas. There, there, in this, I think in this town, in this state, there might be some shock value just because of, hey, listen, I'm from Oklahoma. Ain't much different than Arkansas yours, okay? There'll, some, there'll, there'll be some people that say, by God, I'm not wearing no mask. And that's when we have to make a decision whether they get in or not. What, what do you guys, I'll, I'll ask generally. Melissa had a question. Oh. We just passed a resolution that in public buildings, city buildings, you must wear a mask if you can't prove a vaccination. Okay. So that might be an alternative. I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah I'm no, listening to all ideas. Yeah, that, um, you know we're going to meet resistance. Yes. Are we all going to be okay with that resistance? Because this is, is this, is this, uh, are masks mandated in this state or not? No. no. Or not, see? No. That's where the problem lies. Right. That's where the problem lies. Jeff, what do you think about any of this? You know, it's a, this is a tough area, right? Because we absolutely want to keep people as safe as possible. Yes. Or my question is, if we decide as a whole that we want masks at the shows, or would you help us to enforce that? If, if, they, if we decide as a whole, as a commission, to require masks, will you you'll work with Oh, well, I'll have to. Okay. Well, co just cooperation-wise, look, we had a great conversation today with Butch, and and uh, we really, it was fun. We got to talk about kind of some of the old stories, yeah. of, you know, around here, which was which was kind of fun. I would really I'd encourage you to visit with all of these. And um, I, I really was encouraged that I think communication is the key on this moving forward, right? Is that where our staff and you and your staff are all working together to make sure that, because COVID is changing on a day-to-day -day basis yes. and rules and laws and all of that are changing. So I, I'm okay with whatever the commission decides as a whole. The, the one, we'll make that decision and we'll get it right to you the, right away. The, 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 one factor that we got to keep in mind, the first, show, the major show for me is Robert O'Keen on September 18th. That's the one that's, that's coming up fairly soon. I say a lot of, there's a lot to be learned about everything that we're talking about, management on the crowd in terms of COVID on that particular show. We're going to learn a lot. Mm -hmm. That's probably where we're going to really fine tune what works and what doesn't. And if I'm going to I'd say I would be overly, I would wish to be overly prepared on that show. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still know that the temperature check on site before entry uh, tells us about everything.
It tells us as much as it can. Yes. Are you going to be beefing up security? I'm beefing up. Certainly I am, yeah. Okay. I have to. Uh, because I, what I, what I want to avoid is, is a crowd on the sidewalk. I don't want to see a mutiny, and I don't want to be lynched. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'll need extra security. Uh, the medical staff. You've already heard me define how I want to present them. Pure professionals. Everybody's going to put on a good face, be friendly. We're going to try to convince people that the crap patrons, ticket buyers, that this is the right thing to do. And I think that, I think it's going to work. We've already, you've already sold how many tickets to James Earl? Did you, you Robert Earl, I've sold 600. 600 already. And we got capacity here of 986. I'll give uh, Robert Earl probably 10 comps. There won't be any other tickets given away. That gives us a crowd in the building of capacity, which we'll call 986. So in essence, it's 600 tickets and the show's a month away, it will be a, a sellout show. All right. The, the other great part of our conversation that I thought we had this morning, and the, and the whole reason why, and we haven't even talked about this much yet, but the elevator. The elevator is really crucial because it gives us the ability to have more space, usable space for the auditorium so that when you have a show, we don't necessarily increase our occupancy, but when we got 10 or 15% of people that are normally standing up here, they're in the basement, getting refreshments, yeah. uh, watching the show from down there, hanging out with their friends, and it makes this feel m more, it, it gives us a little bit more space, right? Well, it's a, it'd be a pressure relief. It's I mean, a, it's a, definitely. Yeah, and so pressure it, relief. It, it also eliminates our crowds in the, in the lobby because they're going downstairs to get those refreshments. So I know it doesn't help us for this season, but moving forward, the elevator could really be a big bonus for us to keep yeah that yeah. from happening yeah, we can keeping make the crowds too tight. Yeah, we can make that work. Yeah, I think we can, we can make that work. I think well, we can make that work. Sure we can. I, I think we could possibly sell two kinds of tickets. A ticket for a seat here or a ticket for the simulcast downstairs. That's possible. Of course, to do that, I have to be, I have to very much uh, devise a way to present that to the artist. Artists are paid guarantee versus or plus a percentage based upon every seat sold. So what I would have to do is build that into my deal as kind of a spillover situation. Those seats downstairs would have to be general admission. In other words, if you get in, you stand where you can. Here, I'll do nothing but reserve seats. Now, with the quality of shows that I got, got in mind bringing here, I think there's going to be a smaller percentage of people that want to give up this seat for Willie Nelson or Dwight Yoakam, they're more likely to stay, yeah. OK? OK. But I like the idea. It just gives that ticket holder the opportunity to, to walk downstairs and It'll, have a little bit of elbow room. It also enhances your, uh, your liquid sales, your yeah. bar sales. It does. Sure. Bar yeah. concessions will go sure. way up. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Any, we have any other questions? One. Carol? Uh, nice to meet you, Larry. Loved the Lyle Lovett show. It was just fantastic. I hope you can bring him back again. I'm wondering if you thought about offering, since you are planning for longer periods of time, mm -hmm. uh, a series possibly or ser several series. Uh, do you book far enough out for us to be able to sell like that? Traditionally, I would. Traditionally, I book 120 days and longer out. But with the confusion that COVID's brought, so many days have been canceled, postponed, postponed again, that it's made it nearly impossible to put together any kind of series that stays glued together. It becomes fractured. And uh, short, short answer to that, it's possible to do that. So, so far, so far, I've just, uh, I've been on, uh, my, my philosophy has been one good show after the other. You know, it's pretty simple, boilerplate, but I would consider a series. Uh, post, might, post COVID. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get through COVID. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know that it's ever gonna go completely away. I think what we, uh, the, the method we design to manage the COVID situation as it relates to this theater is going to be something that we probably have to learn and may have to have to use elements uh, of it 
for years. I hope that's not true, but you know, I, when I booked this fall, when I booked the shows for this fall, uh, Robert Earl Keane, the next up for me, Marshall Tucker with the Outlaws, October 29. I brought in a comedian for Diversity Weekend with uh, whatever name, Feemster, okay? Fortune Feemster, that show's already sold out. I've, I've put my neck out on the line to try to help get something right. for Nancy's uh, Folk Festival for, I believe it's November 17. I have offers in to probably, I've got offers out right now to Willie Nelson. And by the way, I'm not supposed to divulge this, so I'll take a chance. Don't get on Facebook with this, please. <laughs> I've offered a good sum of money to Willie. I've made a good offer to White Yoakum. Lyle Lovett is confirmed Maybe. next year, okay. March 23. We got that one in the bag. And as I, as I stand here with you, I have no doubt whatsoever there's going to be a time when I'm able to pick and choose the cream of the crop. What's that do? That gets us the cream of the crop in here for the city. It's a pretty big deal. This is no small deal to me. This is a big deal. Yes. Yeah, I'd be, it'd be wonderful if we could revive the Blues Festival and have yep. two or three acts a weekend or over a few days. Mm -hmm. I'm all ears. Yeah. Yeah. I bet that, you know, the complexity of a festival, ask Nancy. <laughs> it's not yeah. my art. My art is relationships with the major artists, mm -hmm. getting the deal cut, having them do an enjoyable show for the patrons. Hopefully, I make a profit, and that and on to the next show. To the next show. Uh, I did. I was the guy that did the Oklahoma Blues, produced it with my money. The Tulsa Blues Festival, the Oklahoma Blues Festival in Tulsa. I owned Kane's Ballroom for 25 years, oh. and that real estate around Kane's wasn't so, it wasn't gentrified yet. So I had access to all these empty fields and empty buildings. And my Blues Festival worked. I did it two days though. I did Saturday and Sunday. I would have been ahead doing Friday and Saturday as I look back now. But I did, I did large numbers. But the farmers started relying on me to make it rain. Every time I do a Blues <laughs> Festival, it'd rain like hell, okay? So, as I got older, I got, my nerves got shattered. So, yeah, Blues Festival, but we may get somebody else to do it for us, okay? okay. Let's just be advisors on that one. Oh, I got Nancy right there. So. Yeah, Nancy, yeah. I'll roll that one over. I'll defer that to Nancy. Hey, but, thank you, Larry. Does anybody else have anything else? I don't want to cut him short, but we do have a lot today. Okay, well, my heart's in this. That's all I want you to know. Yeah, well, we appreciate you very much, and thank you for coming. All right. Thank you thank so you. much. Have a good time. Okay. Paradise update is next. I've asked them to do this in the workshop because there's quite a bit of stuff. And of course, Madison is here and got her feet wet. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to her and let her run this little folk. Well, we had Paradise coming on the Zoom, but it's not working. So um, they're gonna be on standby. If we have any questions, I can go ahead and give Rudy a call. Um, so if you guys have any further questions after what I go over, any input that you'd like to give them, we can give them a call. Um, you guys should all have the monthly report printout. Um, I'm just going to kind of quickly breeze, breeze through that. I have some talking points typed out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this will be a report that we receive on a monthly basis. This is my first one. Um, let's see here. So. Essentially, page two gives a quick summary of activities by Paradise for the month of July. Um, they provide this report around the middle of the following month. So we got this just last week, I believe. On page three, basically page three through 11 goes through social media. I have a couple of highlights here I'd like to give you guys. And it looks like we have around 23,000 followers on Instagram, which is great. Um, our total reach for July was almost 185,000 people. That's an increase of 14%. Um, that's also great. Going to page five, you'll see Facebook details. In July, our Facebook efforts reached over 600,000 people. I'm gonna skip page six. It just goes into detail on Facebook video performance. If you have questions about that, again, we can talk to Paradise. 
7 talks about top, page 7 talks about top performing posts. Page 8 talks about our Twitter handle. 9 and 10 goes over some of our posts on each channel and gives an overview of each of their performances. Then page 11 digs into details on the website. <clears throat> in July, we had about 95,000 sessions. Visitors went, o went to over three pages and were on site for about two minutes and 40 seconds. Those are really great metrics. Wow. <laughs> so on page 13, we start talking about PR. <clears throat> this information comes from a third party reporting tool called Meltwater and it shows that estimated impressions at 311,500, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 311,562,074 for an estimated media value of around 2.8 million. Two, yep. And then page 14 goes over the star report. This kind of really highlights our hotel data. The last page visualizes our tax collection, collections to date. Um, I can provide this via email if anyone would like this as well. In addition to this, um, outside of the report, I've met with Paradise for oh, almost every day since I've been here. Um, I really appreciate them. I think they're great. Um, they have some great insight, some great navigation for the marketing efforts here. Um, I'm really trying to get my hands on the steering wheel quickly. Um, I love it. We're having a great time. Um, I can move into the brand shoot, if that's okay. Yeah. So, sure. Um, can we separate the lodging from the restaurant collections? Rick will have that for us in the budget. Yeah, okay. Yep. So, coming up, we're going to do a brand shoot with Paradise. Um, I'm very excited about this. This is going to happen around late September, so we're going to choose around four locations. <clears throat> we're going to highlight a few things, you know, primarily outdoors, activities, cabins. We're going to uh, highlight some art, some, some, some unique accommodations, and of course some family accommodations there. Um, we went out and took a look at a few locations uh, yesterday. It's great. I'm very excited about that. We're going to do some lifestyle shoots. So uh, we'll hire some talent. Um, it's going to be a bit of a larger production, but it's going to be awesome. We're going to use these for our marketing efforts going forward in the upcoming years. I think they're going to give us some great, some great media presence there. Um, in addition to that, Paradise has given us two blogs in the month of August. I believe everybody has those. They're live on our website. First one was a writer's guide to my mountain biking. This is awesome. There's so it's much. The it's up on the screen. Yep, it looks great. Um, there's there's a lot going on with mountain biking in Eureka Springs as I'm learning. Um, I've yet to buy my mountain bike, but we're getting there, um, <laughs> and we will soon, I promise. And then I'll be using this guide. Um, this is great. You know, it, I love to read these personally. I think it gets a lot of a lot of media presence. In addition to that, we had the Living History, a tour of Eureka Springs Historic Hotels. That went live yesterday or, or, or this morning, one recently. Um, <clears throat> that one's on our website as well. It goes over, like it says, a tour of the Eureka Springs Historic Hotels. Um, beautiful pictures here. It's a great blog. So we essentially do about two of these uh, a month. Hey, all, this is we've, got some we've got some coming up in September that you guys will enjoy as well. Yeah, beautiful photos. And um, that brings us to our radio spot that Paradise put together for us. Uh, I believe we have that to play for you guys. This will this goes out or will go out to the Fort Smith area. So that reaches, I think it reaches as far as Tulsa. Yes. Uh, we've got hey, a all, lot this going is Bo with a question for you. Why there. do we humans think we have to save the fun stuff for the weekends? Well, I'm here to tell you that you don't. That some of the best fun that you can have happens between Monday and Friday, and the best place to have that fun 
is in Eureka Springs. Now I know what you're thinking. Bo, buddy, some of us have to work. Well, I'm here to give you permission to play hooky and treat yourself to everything Eureka Springs has to offer. I'm talking endless outdoor adventures like hiking, biking, camping, fishing, boating, all in some of the most beautiful surroundings the Ozarks have to offer. Then there's downtown Eureka Springs itself with all its unique shops, restaurants, and galleries, not to mention some of the coolest buildings you'll ever see. I'm telling you, Eureka Springs is like no other place in Arkansas, which means there's no better place to play a little midweek cookie. Folks who live there like to say it's artsy, quirky, a little curious even. And as someone who loves going there, I'll just say it's curious indeed. Plan your midweek getaway today at eurekasprings.org. That's eurekasprings.org. So that's our 60-second version. We also have a 30-second version. Um, And I love it. I think it sounds great. Um... Then I have some things that Molly, she, Molly couldn't be here. She is actually, I think, on a plane right now to Colorado, which we're all jealous of her. Uh, let's see here. She's given me, do you all have a newsletter in your packet? There's a newsletter here. It looks like this. It's this That's it. cover here. So uh, Molly put this together. Um, she's great. She did a wonderful job. This one, I think it has an introduction to myself, um, some other things. This is the first one that there's been in a while. We're going to try and do this Um, bi-monthly. Essentially, this will update the community members about the events in Eureka Springs. So we're excited about that. We'll try and get that together twice a month. Oh, she did a great job. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? Oh, it's darling. It's so cute. I know. Oh, I haven't found it yet. Have you not found oh. it? You can have this one. It's on your agenda, in the agenda packet. I said, oh, you know, near the back. Okay, you find it? No, you can have this one here. I've seen it. Great. I just wanted to yeah. follow up a little bit with the brand shoot, you know, the, and then you guys can look at this. But, you know, they're coming up with concepts, and they're kicking those over to Madison. But this is one of the concepts that I really like, and I know All it's the the difficult to, to see here, but... The concept here is that we have somebody on the street buying art. They're carrying the art back to their car. They're trying to stuff it in their convertible or something <laughs> like that. And, and this is kind of some of the concepts uh, that they're coming up with. And you guys are welcome. If you want to see any of this, we have it. Okay. But yeah. you, can, you can flip here back Got and it. forth okay. and you can see some of the concepts. Uh, these that are lifestyle shoots, so we do need actors and we, uh, we do need um, wardrobe and some of that kind of stuff. Maybe. Just one caution. Um, you mentioned the end of September, mm-hmm. you know, which is normally bikes, blues, and barbecue time. So mm-hmm. almost anywhere you go, you're going to have motorcycles in the background, which is good for some of the stuff, but maybe not for every picture. So okay. Just to um, keep it in mind. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. I think we're going to try and do it during the week. Yeah, um, yeah. These will be early morning shoots before the bikers get out of bed. Okay. We'll, and, we'll be out there. Okay. And we'll be employing some locals with this or some of our local talent a little bit? We, that's something that we need Madison. But okay, they, are bringing, they are bringing photographers and some equipment. And then we're waiting on a list of photographers' equipment, a list that they're going to provide to us that we'll source locally. Okay, and we don't fantastic. Have that list. We don't have that list yet. Oh, but, yeah. fantastic. Anyway, James, if you want to see any of this, this is some of the concepts, shopping in front of the flat iron kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. In addition to that, um, Molly also has given me an events update. So, summer music series, I believe you all have this uh, handout as well. Mm -hmm. Um, She says we're halfway through the lineup. We have a show this weekend. Um, It starts on, it's on Saturday. It starts at 5, and we have four remaining weekends for that. It ends on September 17th. Um, I have a question. Sure. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but I thought uh, the mayor had uh, nixed any uh, activities in the park. Just drumming. Just drumming. Just drumming? Just drumming. So what's the difference between a concert and drumming? Well, well they pack pretty tight for the drumming. He, he is allowing the, con- the, the concerts to go on. Yeah. Drumming's pretty much... You're standing right next to each shoulders other. Shoulders to shoulders. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you draw a crowd, they're going to be shoulders to shoulder for concert. Yeah. 
So he, he's been attending, and I've gone through the maybe to the shows, and it looks like to me, for the most part, groups are staying together. They're they're doing a pretty good job of staying together, and they're not, you know. Yeah. And I think the concern is, is that drumming draws so many people. There's just not the space up there to, to do that. So, but we're continuing to monitor it every yeah. day, and we're taking. Uh, if, the, if the mayor shuts us down, he shuts us down. But at this point, he hadn't. So. Yeah, drumming in the park was my next point. Um, it's it's been, been canceled. canceled. It's been canceled. <laughs> and then we have folk festival. I believe uh, Nancy's going to talk about that in a bit. Um, we, that's can, we can just go right into it. It'll move sure. our agenda around a little bit, but this is a workshop, so if we want to just go right into Folk Festival. Sure. Plus, we still have Larry here, too. That would be good. And, and there was a budget here. She did give us yep. an updated budget somewhere. I saw it. Yeah, I, I gave you a sheet with, with what I have budgeted so far out of what you've given me. Um, First, I want to go to the COVID stuff for Folk Festival, and I'm with Larry. I would like to have temperatures and masks. Um, I can get some retired RNs. I'm thinking an easy up outside the door. And also, um, when I went to Woody Fest, one thing they did ahead of time was they checked vaccination cards all during the day and gave people armbands. And if we wanted to set up an all-day tent where you could check your card and get your armband, that's always a good thing. But you still have to check their, check their temperature and require a mask. And so that would be a volunteer. You're saying that's a voluntary thing. People could come up and volunteer. Volunteer to show so their card knows. and get a wristband and say, "Well, I'm vaccinated." But you'd still need your temperature checked and a mask. Right. But, but I actually just, really like that idea. It's like it's a nice thing, and it was really handy at Woody Fest. And um, at their theater, they'd only had quarter occupancy because it was in July. And even with quarter occupancy, an armband, and people wearing masks, somebody sneezed behind me. <laughs> and it was the most awful experience I'd had in about 15 months. And it was like, oh my god. I, I, so I'm just saying, all these, all these things we do, there's always a, a fail. So, but um, I've got most, the music is all lined up. We have all of our ticket sales online. I'm more than happy to have um, mask required and temperatures taken on the door added to all of the ticket sales on, the, on there just so people won't be surprised when they come. If, if that's agreeable with everyone, I don't, uh, if we're going to do it, we might as well put it on the, the sales. We haven't sold that many tickets because we've just got them online. Um, Bear Morrison, who's doing the Thursday Night Todd Snyder Show, has sold tickets, but I'm sure he'd be agreeable to that, that requirement, too. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I'm, I'm way within budget. You gave me money to put on a free Thursday night show. Bear Morrison is putting on a ticketed show that night. He is selling tickets, so he is bringing people to town. With Jeff's permission, I used that money to... Um, book a show on Friday night that we're going to use as a benefit for the Flint Street Food Bank and other food banks in the area. Um, so we're going to do canned food donations, fill the bin at the door, and take cash donations for the food banks. I also have a Saturday night show at Main Stage. We're setting up a stage down there. Um, Larry said it was okay that we had a small show opposite Gangster Grass. It's going to be still on the hill, which is out of Fayetteville. We're going to use that as a benefit for the Historical Museum. So we're using the money you gave me for a free show to do two benefit shows to benefit the city and should bring a lot of people into town. Um, let's see, what else do I need to talk about? Um, Marketing, uh, we've been talking with Channel 5 for some 15 second spots in the morning and evening news. That's going along really well. We need to produce a short commercial for that. They will do that for us or we can look for some local talent to do that. Um, either way, I, I haven't reached out to anyone locally. There's two or three firms we can. They do it for $500, which is probably what anyone local would do. Would do it for it. it will be a you know it'll be a short visual with a voiceover. Um, I've reached out to public radio stations in Fayetteville, Tulsa, Springfield, Little Rock, Kansas City, St. Louis, Lawrence, Kansas, Chicago, and Dallas. They all have very reasonable packages to put spots on for the next couple months during their folk programming. Uh, a couple of them said it'd be better to do five spots seven days a week and they have really easy attractive packages we can afford for that so it would really get the word out all through this area um what else 
I've been talk I talked to the Gazette about doing some print ads, but they seem I'm not sure how you all feel about print ads, but it, uh, it seems awfully expensive for the reach. I will talk about this uh, probably with Madison, but uh, I just it doesn't <laughs> seem like it's it's feasible. But everything is going really good. I'm getting uh, I've got the posters printed up. You have the rack cards that we have. Uh, we have the poster here. Oh, I, I, did you give you a poster? There you go. There's some here. Yeah, there's there's the poster for the poster. Uh, the face. Our Facebook is is live. Um, we've got it on the uh, EurekaSprings.org website. They need to update our copy and picture, but they should be doing that this week. Um, and we got an Instagram account set up. And uh, we're getting really good feedback to everyone we talk to. So I think I think everything's going on just really well and now that COVID is stabilizing hopefully it'll start dropping and by November we'll have it under control um, but I think we have a really really nice lineup and that I'm getting really good feedback from everyone so uh, on these public radio shows I've got um, a lot of them like KSMU Mike Smith's going to talk about it on his show uh, I can get Mike Shirky to do that over in Fayetteville and Scott Acock to do it in Tulsa so we're going to get a lot of personal talking up of the show over the next couple months once we purchase our ads on the on the radio station. So does anybody have any questions? My my concern is we are where we are today as far as COVID. Yes. Because of Memorial Weekend. Right. We have Labor Day weekend coming up, which is going to put us back in the mix for another spike. I, I agree with you. I think you're right. And we have a COVID rider that we can cancel mid-October if, if it looks like the numbers are going up and this is not going to work out. So all of, our, all of our artists have a COVID rider that if, if, it's, if it looks like the city's going to shut down, we can shut down the festival. We can, still do the, we can still do the outside music and social. You know, in the park, you can social distance. You can set up chairs. You can get far enough away from each other. But that doesn't bring in a lot of people. But still, you can do things outside. There's less transmissibility outside than there is in a closed building. But we're just, I think it's just a wait and see. We can, you know, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, more, I'm the most COVID cautious person you've ever run into in your life this last year. So I, I, I agree. We don't know if it's going to spike again. But the vaccination rates are going up. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm very hopeful that people will get vaccinated and we can get this to where it's a annoyance and not the destructive force. You know? um, any, any other? I don't think that the newspaper ad is worth it. I don't think it's $2,000 a <clears throat> quarter page no, ad. That's really no. expensive. <laughs> that's, that's, no, I, you know, it's going to be on their website and their online thing, but no. I'm, well, I was talking to Larry right before, and really KUAF reaches a huge area it here, does. as does KSMU and um, oh, what is uh, KSMO over in, uh, in uh, Oklahoma. They, they have a good reach, and they're the audience for folk. They're the people. Well, that's who, right. They got yeah. the programming to match the ad. Right, right. And, and we've, we've got the folk programming pretty good. I've talked to Little Rock today, and I think we can get mentions on their folk show, too. And it doesn't take that much if we, we're just persistently do these small spots most of them are 30 to 40 dollars for 15 to 30 seconds so they're, they're very reasonable spots and they'll give us packages deals on that and put the information on the websites cool. yeah so yeah um i that's that's all i have i think it's all going wonderfully and uh i i think that's we've got the budget and like i say we're way under budget and also on arkansas on the barefoot ball we should get all of our money back that we've invested as probably the Sunday night show will probably get all your money back. Um, the other two are the ones that we're doing as benefits for the food bank and the historical museum. So we, the town will get the money back from That's that. That's a great idea, Nancy. I'm okay. glad that you have all to right. do that. Any questions? No, just thank you. Yeah, You're thank kind you. of having sex. Oh, no. Great job. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm yeah. trying. Okay. Thank, thank all right. Thank you all. Yeah. And I will be out of town the next, I'll be at the Folk Festival over in Fayetteville the next few days, but I'm handing out rack cards, so I'll <laughs> be working. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be on top. Now, we don't want you to have fun. We want you to work. <laughs> oh, I always am. have fun when I work. <laughs> okay, thank you Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the auditorium because that was kind of uh, we, the city council had a meeting today. Uh, we do have numbers. That's this Nabaholtz packet that you guys have mm -hmm. here. 
um, and I'm going to ask the city council people and uh, Madison to help me uh, with this because it's, there's a lot to it and there's a lot of kind of numbers. So um, the city has gotten bids to do um, two projects. One of them is um, for the What's Dwayne's department? Park uh, the the public, uh, work. Public, public works, works building. Public works building, and then also the improvements here to this building. And now the improvements here are the elevator and the restroom and the basement. And what would happen is, is people would be able to come over here on First Street, and they would be able to come in in a wheelchair and come into the elevator and go down into the basement. And then there would be a handicap accessible restroom that restroom, if you're facing the concession area, my understanding is, is it would be all the way to the left in that corner. It was originally scheduled to be towards the right of the concessions, but because that, that area didn't work, Navajo's made a recommendation to move the restroom to the other side. Um, the great part about that is that as we move forward with concerts, it gives us the ability to spread our wings a little bit. It gives us the ability to do conferences. I, I mean, I could really see us doing a wedding conference here, which would be great for our community and our town, a mountain biking conference where people can utilize that space. It's a great way for us to, to work towards a auditorium that is self-sustaining. Right. It's also a great, uh, Madison and I have had great conversations about the ability, we want to have the ability, we need to go out and entice more corporations that want to come to Eureka to do their little corporate events or right. retreats or whatever. This gives us more ability than ever before to do that. Small um, trade shows too, down in the basement. Trade oh, yeah. shows, all of that stuff, we, mm -hmm. we gain that uh, ability right away and then we're handicap accessible, which, which would be, which would be right. great. Now, the cost. The cost to do that, as you see, is, and there's a lot of information here. You, ju you just have to tell me and interrupt me where you want more information, but you can see there's a full breakdown of all the costs well, here. Let me ask you a question on the elevator. Sure. Does it come up to the mezzanine? No. No. Nope. And the question is, why not? It only act, it only accesses from the first street to the to the basement. Right. It yep. doesn't come up to this level. I mean, so, so now we're tasked with getting handicapped from. Well, we still have our handicap issue, which I think we've got a maybe. A, is that what this is? The ramp. Yeah, the ramp. Is, is that we still have our handicap people coming in? I'm waiting on a bid for the to replace that to junk it's, it's, at the door. It's and then this other ramp here, which would give us the, the ability to come in on the side over here as well. So the only way that elevator, I think, ever comes to this level is if we build this level all the way to the, because that elevator is in the back. It's in the very far back corner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I believe, Butch, a couple years ago when we were discussing doing this, that was he got, I don't know, bids or whatever, but it, it was the cost and it was almost unfeasible to do, to, we'd have to almost do two of them. So this is just an old building and they were not handicap accessible back then, unfortunately. So the cost to do this is $363,000, some change there. Mm. Um, Nabaholtz, if if both of these projects are done at the same time, and they will be because the city has already approved them, well, we will get a, a discount of 69000 basically around $70,000 on our project, and they get a discount on their project of 74000 So there's a, there's a substantial savings, and the city council has already approved these two projects. What Butch has asked us to do is to fund 75% of this 293000 for the elevator. Do we have a few years to pay it off? We do. Okay. So we don't have, because obviously we can't do that with no. one check. We, that would, mm -hmm. But I asked Lonnie and had a great conversation with Lonnie and I said, can we pay this out? And he agreed to five years. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. They'll draw up a contract between us and them and we'll pay this out over five years. And that was roughly, Madison, you have those numbers. Um, a five year plan is 44000 $84.25 a year. So that's what our portion would be. Right. Well, I have a question for both Bobby and James because you long timers. Wasn't the basement really utilized for a long time? No. Okay. Because 
It's hardly, but, ever, it's hardly ever been No, long. 20 years before. What, 20 years, so in 2000? Yeah, before that, was it utilized? Not to my Butch, knowledge. Butch said it was, Bobby? The only thing I really remember as a young girl growing up here was, I took ballet lessons in there. Mm -hmm. And there was roller skating, I know. I don't remember roller skating. Oh. I remember my mother played basketball down there. That was yep. the gym. Yep. But I don't, I've owned Mud Street now for 20 years. Okay. And to my knowledge, nothing has gone on the 20 years since I've been back home. Right. But I was gone for 20 years. Right. And so what happened during that 20 years, I don't know. Right. Well, I've been here 35 and I can't yeah. tell you anything of any consistency oh. that occurred. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying, sorry to interrupt you, Jay. Okay. Well, Butch, Butch elaborated that it was at one time fairly well used, and yeah. I guess our plan for the city, and, and I'm 100% behind it, is that to utilize this building, and I think we can utilize it in a lot of ways, and we've got Madison who has experience in conferences and trade shows, and Molly's just a live wire, and I think her education is we really need to start utilizing this building. Larry is a perfect example of what he can do, and I really want to see us move forward. I, I remember having an HDC conference down there and getting it a little less dreary and ADE accessible. I, I just, I, I think it's time. I, I just think it's time we move forward and start doing different things and utilizing some of the jewels we have. So there is a budget here that Madison made up, and I've asked her to put together a five-year plan. Now, th so this is just the surface of the five-year plan. But and so Nabaholt's here. Our part would be two hundred twenty thousand dollars, which would mean we would be paying roughly forty-four thousand a year for five years to pay them back. Um, but that that is just the elevator and the restroom and a few renovations down there. We still would have to do an audio-visual renovation there where uh, people can go down there and there's a bigger screen and some sound system and uh, we we're estimating now we, these are not set numbers but we've estimated that's twenty thirty thousand dollars of course there's other additional work that has to be done down there you guys have been down there there's quite right. a bit of overall work around the auditorium mm -hmm. so there's uh, the other thing that we have to do which is not on this and we don't have a quote or a bid for it yet and that is our fly points. We talked about these several times over the last year, but we have to have fly points in here so that we can fly lighting and sound. Mm -hmm. And also we, we have to have a beam engineered to put across the top. And Ron's been working on that. Ron, where do we know where we're at on that? Is there any update at all on the? Um, actually, yes. I just gave the plans to Neville. The uh, original contractor that we uh, gave the plans to has retired. Okay. Uh, Neville says it in their hands. They're going to be communicating with Bill. And we'll set up a meeting next week to where I can take them up into the attic so they can see it, get a visual, and then you know, get a better idea of what they need to do. So okay. that's where it stands right now. All right. Okay. Any other, we, is this our workshop? Any other auditorium stuff that anybody wants to, because we're running out of time? Yep. Okay. We'll bring that back up in the meeting. Um, we have an update for Festival of the Arts. Carol, you've been going to the Festival of the, to the Arts. Meetings, yes. Meetings. Sandy, Sandy wasn't able to be here today. She's involved in a, a meeting uh, with the state uh, regarding the arts, and she has, asked me just to pass this information along to you. Um, in looking at the year upcoming, the Arts Council's recommending a few uh, modifications to their original plan. Uh, this does have a lot to do with the resurgence of the, of the COVID Delta. Um, anyway, uh, 
they do want to stick with their original plan to emphasize more year-round arts programming and to also focus on public art, um, particularly our local artists. Um, so uh, to let you know, um, certain events that they had hoped to do were, were, were done to, to bring crowds. And so what they've decided to do now is put a hold on those particular applications possibly till next year, and then these are the things they're proposing to do now. Um, they want uh, the all public uh, outdoor, small safe outdoor activities in developing year-round arts program. Um, these four projects have been approved to go this fall, and the budget we've already approved will pay for them. Uh, we're going to upgrade and repair the music park. At the Rainbow Stairs mural, um, there will be a new mural that'll be by the New Delhi. It'll be another Rainbow Stair mural. At Harmon Park, there'll be an art, uh, art trail installations with local artists, and you have some pictures in the packets of some of those things that will be installed. And then um, they're working with the retailers in town on the Eureka Springs Enchanted Fairy Doors, which may end up running into the Christmas season as well. Um, the first three installations that I mentioned are planned with small, uh, small public reveals, um, an event that'll be safe for the outdoors but can be advertised so as people come to town they can enjoy these events. Um, they've also gotten a, a really incredible um, bid from Edward Robinson and uh, we all know his incredible work here and the great work he did for the CAPC. One um, of the things he's talking about doing would be two web-based, interactive, augmented reality, virtual trail mapping projects. They would feature the following um, items in town. The Eureka Springs Springs, there's lots of them. Uh, the Eureka Springs Public Art and Ghost Signs, and those would be kind of a project done at the same time. Each map will feature 25 minimum, 50 maximum springs and public art installations, and they will be designed as web and mobile friendly, so people can be on their phones, they can be wherever they want, and they can go and be part of these public installations. Uh, the concept provides a base for more interactive and augmented reality ways for visitors to access and experience the plentiful creative and artistic assets of Eureka Springs. It also encourages people to use the trails in a different way. Um, Edward's full proposal is attached to, at the back of this packet, uh, and I would really encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, the second thing is a web-based Eureka Springs spirits and culinary project. Um, I'm really grateful that the Arts Council has really been looking at our restaurants and culinary as part of the great arts that we have here. Uh, they plan to do a digital passport which will feature signature cocktails and brews available around town with a backstory about the cocktail or a spirit, as in haunted or alcoholic, factoid about some of the buildings where the establishment is located. Restaurants and eateries will be featured in uh, promoting a unique offering from that restaurant. The concept could include short videos done by the chef or owner. A Taste of Eureka promotion can be added at any time to promote visiting the restaurants and receiving a bonus of a complimentary cocktail dessert appetizer or whatever the restaurant may choose to decide. Um, we would, they would be working with Paradise on this project and they have been talking about how they would work it. Um, I personally like that they were thinking ahead about how their original budget and ask could be morphed to better fit what may be happening this mm -hmm. fall. Um, and I think it's kind of a really interesting template. Um, you can look at the budget that they've got uh, for the the uh, new things they want to do, what you might see on the augmented reality tour. I think this is a picture of one of the, as you're <laughs> viewing the springs, here, and your phone up. Um, I
my main focus going forward. That we approve? I don't think we need to. You don't need to. It, it's, it's, it's in the budget. It's in Mary. the There's already a budget okay. for it. So we don't, there's no reason for it. So I just wanted to make sure we were transparent yeah. there. Yeah. We're, we're aware of it. That it's on, hopefully, four or five years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, have we given any thought to lighting? I know a, a good construction company <laughs> to put up some barriers, some vapor barriers. They'll put plastic right. in areas to keep it. Right. Um, and we'll make sure we they're not here on show days. Yeah, I know. Planning before that, so it'd have to be about two in the afternoon. Is that right, Ron? Well, if we're concerned about getting word out to the public, talking about this for years. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, start that process of hiring an auditorial manager. So, okay. I think we should put out an ad. ad put out an ad, and do we have a idea? Put in the ad what they what they want, what they require. Are we talking Ask about them. a full-time position, a part-time position, a contracted position, an hourly position? Right, we've discussed that. So, have we got someone that can come do that? Well, hardware that's in the building, we got to get all the equipment out of here. Um, I think we've got to treat the stage differently. Then we can talk about, you know, the theater itself and the, the basement. But the most important thing is, uh, and, and, and that we might not be able to get that done before this finish yet. But, uh, so I have a question for Rick. Rick, do we already have money budgeted for cleaning here at the auditorium? Is there already money for that? Yeah, we have how, a lot of operations How budget. much out of that operations budget do we already have for cleaning? It's whatever we need to okay. use. I mean, we've I, only used like 12000 of our yeah. operations budget, which I'd was like, like to 40 I'd like to just make a recommendation that now that we have Madison here and we have Sarah back on staff that we just turn, we don't have to vote to release any money here. The money's already there. Mm -hmm. We just need to tell them to, to, to work to get it and keep updating us. Um, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's what so we we'll, hired Madison for. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> the benefit of having a tourism director. She's in charge. She's in charge. Okay. Anything else on the auditorium? Is anybody, anything else there? I feel like we've, mm -hmm. okay. We had some marketing um, request supports, and there's actually two of these that are, I'm not sure, springtime in the Ozarks, but it's next year. I'd like to recommend, it's not until April of 2022, I'd like to recommend that we push that down the road a little bit. Agreed. And we let Madison kind of, when she gets more. And then we also had one for the, the cat house, um, and it needs to be revised, okay? I'm just gonna say that. So I've asked Madison to contact them, to sit down with them, to send them over the marketing guideline supports, rules, because uh, they've asked for, I won't even say, so I'll come up with that. So we honestly have one marketing support right. that I think we should look at and consider tonight, and that, of course, is the museum, um, and the museum is doing, um, is this Voices? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You are more familiar with this than I am, so. Mm -hmm. And it's October the 23rd, 2021. It looks like they're asking for $5,000. And it is an outdoor event. Right. Mm -hmm. and and it, we don't it, have anybody here from the museum, correct? No one's here. But it, I, I know it brings in a ton of people. A lot of people from yeah. way, I mean, people drive in right. every year for it. Rick, do we have money left for this? Yes, okay. I'm going to make a motion that we approve $5,000 for the Museum's tour. Second. We have a second. Uh, I'll second. Okay, yep. we have two <laughs> okay. seconds. Uh, any? We want any more discussion yeah, on this? What was last year's ask? What did they get last year? Probably the same. Two thousand. Was it just two? How much? Two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. Okay. And they're so what do we have left? Five thousand this year. What do we have left in our um, marketing support? We have twenty-three thousand left. Not counting Not this. Counting that. Okay, so we have twenty-three thousand. This would be a 5000 out of that, so. Any, any I'm just curious about $3,000 more than, than the ask for last year. I mean, that's more than double. I, I've read in the paper they're having some issues with transporting people. In the past, they've used the old Victorian lot, which is a mess now. And um, people normally would stand in that lot, board buses, go to the thing, spend an hour, come back. 
Um, is that part of the reason they're asking yes, for more? And, uh, and also just <clears throat> getting the word back out that it's going to happen again. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. it didn't happen last year, you kind of file off the radar. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to do more advertising to let mm -hmm. people know it's going to happen. And this is a fundraiser for the museum, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I think that's really important to remember, too. What is well, it, three weekends? Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is not a one night event. This is three weekend events. Right. Yeah. And, and, and they haul bus load after bus load into the And the people into come the and they center. stay and they shop and eat. Well, and it also features a lot of our local talent actors yeah. and others um, who are really quite good. Yeah, it does. Okay. I mean, we're already funding the audit. I mean, we're already funding the museum. Not, not, not yet, yet. But Tim hasn't gotten me the contract back yet. No. <laughs> Technicality. But we, 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 we will. might be. It's approved, and we'll <laughs> yeah. pay, we'll do that. So, okay. So we had a motion for five thousand for the total, James. That wasn't my motion. Oh, it, it was mine and oh, Green five. and Bobby seconded it. Yeah. Okay. And was it for five? Yes. yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. So we have motion and a second. No more discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That passes for them. And these other two, Madison, I'm going to have you work with them to revise these and get us back mm -hmm. on the schedule. Springtime in the Ozarks probably needs to come up at our next event, though, because they do a lot of advertising over yeah. the holiday. And, and they're okay. huge. They, they are huge. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and a very a, popular event in town. Yeah. Not, that's not saying we don't want to do it. It's just saying I think yeah. that we need yeah. Yeah. It's a little too soon, and I think I want you to work with them directly so you're sure. on, on board with that. Okay. So 